The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 101 of the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis here, as always, with Sarah Powers. And Sarah, we have to now say 100 and something every time we announce yeah, triple an episode. It is crazy. Um, also, this episode is our very special gift to you for Mother's Day. If you're listening to this up, you know, the week that it comes out, Mother's Day is fast approaching. If it's, you know, Mother's Day is behind you while you're listening to this, just think of it as our belated, our belated gift yes, to you. A perennial Mother's Day gift to you. Exactly. Because every day should be Mother's Day. Am I right? So yes. we have um, a really special episode today and this was all Sarah's idea. So I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about what is in store for you um, and just kind of why we decided to do this. Yeah. So this has been in the works for a while. If you're a regular listener and you follow on social media, this will all sound familiar, but I'll just back up a little bit. Way back in March... Um, I had the idea, but we we launched this idea. I'm going to include you in that, Megan. Thanks. That's <laughs> um, generous. <laughs> to start a letter writing campaign, handwriting letters um, to, from moms all over the country. And in fact, we got letters from all over the world. We encouraged you guys to write a message to somebody who might need to hear it. So these are letters sort of addressed to like an, an anonymous mom that you don't know who might need to hear some words of encouragement that you can offer. So we have been sharing them on social media Um We've been leading up to this very special episode. And it's funny, um, kind of in the middle, maybe midway through this collecting the letters, I thought, well, Megan, if you and I get on the podcast and read all of these letters aloud, it's just going to be us. And I thought, right. why don't we invite our podcasting comrades, our colleagues yes. and friends in the podcasting world to some of whom you may be already listening to, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so that became like a side project that really wasn't part of the original plan. And I'm so glad we did. You guys, as you listen to this very episode, you're going to hear the voices of more than a dozen women in the podcasting and a couple bloggers, um, mostly podcasters. And we asked them to read aloud one of these letters that came in. Now they're not, these aren't letters they've written. They are just providing the dramatic reading if you will. And they did such a beautiful job. It's a really amazing to hear these letters that we've been, you know, we've been looking at them and reading them and sharing photos of them, but then to hear them read aloud um, yeah. by other voices in this space has been so, so cool. So that kind of yeah. just kind of developed into this project. I love that this project turned out just as well as we were hoping it would. I mean, yeah. when you mentioned this to me months ago, I got really excited because I could see how, how good it can feel to sit down and just write your thoughts out. First yes. of all, none of us really do that anymore, like with an yes. actual pen. With a pen. And then <laughs> on paper. And then also what it you know to be able to share your message with a lot of other moms at once i mean most of the people who wrote into us i'm assuming aren't bloggers or They're writers not. they don't have a platform that they can use to reach lots of people with these messages of encouragement so it feels kind of like a gift to the people they're talking to but yes. also a gift to them to be able to share their their little tidbit of their life or their story um via this encouraging letter so it turned out and they've been really heartwarming and some are very sad and some are really funny and it's just yeah. it's been really great and i have to say we're recording Recording this the week before Mother's Day, and there are still a few coming in. And one of the things I decided to do, because we haven't shared every single one, and the ones you hear today are just a selection, um, but I did decide to post the images of every letter we received um, on our website. And it's actually at the same page where the information about the challenge has lived this whole time. So if you go to themomhour.com, there's a little badge in our sidebar that says Mother's Day Challenge. Since we don't need to tell people our address anymore, we're not collecting the letters, I've just converted that into a gallery. So definitely head there um, because we can't share every single one. But like we've said this whole time, if someone has words of encouragement to share, there is someone out there who needs to hear it. So yeah. 
It's really cool to look through them all, and I did decide we will put all of them up there, even if we can't read or share all of them. Oh, good. Okay. Because we got a lot. <laughs> we got a ton. And, yeah, we got yeah, a ton. And actually, we, left, we gave a May 1st deadline, um, and we're recording this the first week of May, so I checked yesterday, and there were two more, and I imagine a few more will trickle in, so I'll continue to um, put them up there. So, yeah, it's been amazing. I can't thank our fellow podcasters enough for the readings that they did that you're going to hear in just a couple of minutes. Um, I think giving voice to these thoughts that women from all over the world put down on paper was just a really cool way to to bring them to life. And I can't wait for you guys to hear them. It's really very cool. So we are welcoming our longtime sponsor Prep Dish back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish protein boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all Prep Dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time, and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this. Slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash the mom hour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know, what's not too good to be true though. Our sponsor ritual and their clinically backed essential for women, 18 plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. So shall we get to this? Let's do it. So okay. Megan, why don't you tell us the voices that we're going to hear from? In this Oh, yeah. Course. Okay. I'm really excited about this. Um, a lot of these are probably podcasters or bloggers you're already familiar with, but some maybe not. Um, some of these are podcasts are newer. And these are all people that we really respect and listen to or follow ourselves. Yeah. And some of them are people that we've um, formed friendships with over the years. So this is a really fun project. So um, I will just read them in order. So first we have Jill Krause with babyrabies.com, then Amy Wilson from What Fresh Hell podcast, then Asha Dornfest and Christine Co from the Edit Your Life podcast. Now Asha and Christine, like all of the pairs, are reading separate letters, but you know we, we put them together because they do co-host a podcast. Leslie Miller from the Coffee and Crumbs podcast, <laughs> Jessica Ashley from Single Mom Nation, Erica Ladd, and then Kelsey Wharton for the Girl Next Door podcast. Sarah Stewart Holland with Pantsuit Politics, Jessica Leahy and KJ Delantonia with the hashtag Am Writing Podcast, Kristen Chase and Liz Gambiner with Spawned, also a podcast, and Sarah Bagley from the Sarah R. Bagley Podcast. And I'm really kind of feeling a little starstruck right now. We're in really good company. We are. And, you know, reading something aloud, Megan, you and I did this like a couple Christmases ago. We did read yes. aloud episodes. There's something really kind of dramatic and really special about reading something aloud. And also because they're not reading their own words. They're giving life to these words that moms from all over the country have sent in. So they just did such a, an amazing job. It was it was such a special thing to hear these um, audio submissions come in after, you know, getting all the letters coming in. So it was yeah. so great. So well, let's go ahead and hear these wonderful women read these letters. Hey, everyone. This is Jill Krause from babyrabies.com. And I'm going to be reading a letter from mommy in Denver. 
Dear mother of busy older kids and a new baby, you may miss a hockey game or two to stay home and nurse. You may not be able to volunteer for that field trip because you don't trust a sitter with an infant, but you are showing your other kids another example of love. You are showing them that through sleepless nights and juggling many tiny humans, you still can put on a smile and give them a hug. They won't remember that game you missed, but they will learn what love is by watching you care for their younger sibling. And someday soon, both you and the baby will be cheering them on at that game. XO Mommy in Denver. Hi, this is Amy Wilson from the podcast What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood. And I'm going to be reading a letter from Xiao. Dear new mom, you have been waiting for this moment for months, maybe even years. And here it is. You sitting in your rocker with your delicate, adorable little newborn swaddled tightly in your arms. Your home or apartment is fully stocked with stacks of new little baby clothes still with their tags on and boxes of diapers you've bought well in advance and the blanket from the hospital and the book on breastfeeding on your nightstand. And yet, why do you feel so alone? Why is it so quiet? Where is everybody gone? New mom, whatever it takes, get out there. Start out simple. Bundle up your little baby and take them outside. Next time, go a little farther, maybe to the nearest coffee shop and get yourself a fancy drink. Break out the stroller and take baby to the park. Make dates with old friends. Make dates with other new moms. Visit your local public library. Do not isolate yourself because of the new baby. Take advantage of this new change in your life to discover new things and make new friendships. This will really help to keep the loneliness at bay. And your baby will benefit, too, from activities outside the house, new experiences, and new types of mental stimulation. Congratulations, new mom. Love, Xiao. Hi, everybody. This is Asha from the Edit Your Life podcast, and I'm going to read a letter from Carol and Indy. Dear mom, who's not taking your child to a popular kids movie because it's scary. Congrats for making the right decision for your child, even though everyone else is doing it. You know your child, and freaking them out isn't worth it. They'll be ready to see that movie eventually. Or not. You're an awesome mom, and I hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. Love, Carol and Indy. Also known as Mom Who Didn't Take Her Kid to See Brave. Hi, everyone. This is Christine Coe from the Edit Your Life show, and I'm going to read a letter from Mama from Indiana. To the mom who desperately wants a second child, a sibling for her first, my heart goes out to you. It was so simple to conceive and have the first babe. Second time around is more challenging. Hang in there, embrace your family with love, and gather each other's strength. Peace, joy, and love to you on this Mother's Day. Hi, everyone. This is Leslie Miller from the Coffee and Crumbs podcast, and I am going to read a letter from Ohio Mama to a little superhero. Happy Mother's Day to moms with little ones in the NICU. Prayers to you and your family. Be proud. You gave birth to the strongest little superhero ever. Love makes their superpowers even stronger. This wasn't in the birth plan you envisioned, but be certain God has great plans for this beautiful little life. They will amaze and inspire you. You will find strength that you thought was only possible through a Hollywood studio. Prayers, love, and hugs, an Ohio mama to a little superhero. I'm Jessica Ashley from Single Mom Nation, and I am so honored to read this letter that comes from the single working mom in California. Dear single mom who works all day and works all night, but still has that laundry from two weeks ago on the bed waiting for you, and who would rather just close her eyes just for a few moments, that's okay. You do it all alone, and everyone asks you how you do it, but for you, it's all you know. You have nothing different to compare it to, and nothing is wrong with your lifestyle or household. Just keep that crown on your head, because you do not need a king to be a queen. The home you keep up and running is still a castle, and you and your kids are still the royal family. Keep your head up to keep that crown on and have a wonderful Mother's Day. Love, the single working mom in California. Hi, everyone. This is Erica from the Girl Next Door podcast, and I want to read one of your fabulous Mother's Day cards. Here goes. We are amazing mothers. The fact that we get up and do it all again shows just how awesome we are. When we have a rough day, we may cry ourselves to sleep, but we always wake up and try to have a better day. Happy Mother's Day. We rock. 
Hi, this is Kelsey. I am co-host of the Girl Next Door podcast, and I am calling in from Gilbert, Arizona. And I am going to read a lovely note from a mom. I first want to read the card first because it has one of my favorite quotes on it. The front says, With a new day comes new strength and new thoughts. Eleanor Roosevelt. And inside it says, Trust the light within you. Let it shine. Dear mom who's about to return to work after maternity leave, you can do it. You will find a routine, you will sleep again, and you will remember all the stuff you've forgotten after these weeks away from your job. It probably won't be easy to leave your baby for the first time, but eating lunch alone is a beautiful gift. No worries if you need to take a nap at your desk. We've all been there. It gets easier, I promise. Happy Mother's Day, Anne. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah Stewart Holland from Pantsuit Politics Podcast, and I'm going to read a letter from Mom in San Francisco. Dear Mom, whose baby died this year, Mother's Day is going to suck. Plan for it. Take care of yourself. It is okay if you want to opt out of Mother's Day completely this year. Instead, go to a support group or visit the baby's grave. Give yourself space. Protect yourself from the friends who complain about their healthy living children. They will just make you sad. Sad for you and sad for them. They take for granted so much. Instead, find the caregivers, the sensitive ones, the ones who are able to get it. Those friends exist too. You may need to make space for them, though. It is worth the effort. Mom in San Francisco. Hi, this is Jess Leahy from the hashtag AmWriting with Jess and KJ podcast. Most importantly, I am a mom. Dear mom, whose child was recently diagnosed, welcome mom. You are fragile and scared and panicked and worried. Right now you're overwhelmed. It's okay. Be overwhelmed. Feel the sadness and the fear and the confusion. And then when you're ready, open your eyes and look at your sweet child and remember that he is the same little human that he was before his diagnosis. I know that you didn't choose this path or envision this life, but hold on tight because there are some brilliant moments of joy and pride headed your way. Life may look a little different than you had anticipated. Your family's pace is going to change. All of that is okay because love doesn't change. It deepens. Your commitment strengthens. You become an expert, an advocate, a protector, a learner, all wonderful things for your child to witness you become. You can do this. You've been chosen to do this. Move forward bravely and always remember, you are not alone. With love, another mom. Hi, this is KJ Delantonia from Hashtag AmWriting with Jess and KJ, and I'm going to read a letter from Trisha. Dear Mama, who is completely spent by bedtime every day and can't manage super sweet tuck-ins every night, just think of all the other times each day that you gave them all of you and more. There were many. And remember, you are human. We've all got our strengths, and it's okay if bedtime isn't one of yours. Happy Mother's Day, Trisha. Dear introvert mom of a special needs kid who doesn't care about your comfort zones, I know it's hard to have a child who causes all eyes to turn your direction when you are the type of person who will do just about anything to avoid that kind of attention. You are agreeable and overly polite, but your child does not get this at all. One of the hardest parts for you is when your child is struggling in public and it's all you can do to not hiss and shrink. You sweat and rush until you can control your environment once again. Your introvert tendencies at times overshadow your mom instincts and it's all too powerful to allow you to laugh in the moment. No matter what, you are still the perfect mom for your child. If this seems oddly specific, it's probably because I'm writing what I so needed to hear about 13 years ago. But if I've learned nothing in all my years of living and mothering, I've at least learned that if I'm going through it, no matter how unique the experience feels, it's highly likely that someone else is too. Please hear me and know on Mother's Day and every day, it's all good. Every last bit of it. You are doing better than you think you're doing. Good job, introvert mama. You are doing hard work. Happy Mother's Day, Lori. Dear mama who has to return to work and leave your six-week-old, you can do this. You are stronger than you know. Your baby will not love you any less. Your bond with him will remain strong. 
go ahead and gush about him at work. Look at videos and pictures of him throughout the day. It's not fair you had to leave him so soon, but it will be okay. Give yourself grace. Love, new mom of Zach in Missouri. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah from the Sarah R. Bagley podcast, and I'm going to read a letter from Marie. Dear mom, that's your name now. And sometimes you cringe when you hear it. What? This is what my life is now? Wasn't I supposed to be a test pilot or solving the world's clean water problem by now? But then you look at your children who are slowly growing into wonderful and kind humans, and it's worth it. There will be time later. There will be time. Love, Murray. Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment. (laughs) Right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash mom hour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, everybody, welcome back. This is Sarah. Thank you again so much to our guest readers. Um, We're just really grateful that they took the time to read those beautiful letters out loud. Um, And it's been a fun way to connect with other podcasters in the community and a couple of bloggers. So I want to remind everybody to please go check out their shows and their blogs. We will link to all of them in the show notes, which you can find at themomhour.com. And this is episode 101, right, Megan? Yeah. So that was, I loved hearing all those and um, it was really fun to give us some of them a little bit of the spotlight. I wish yes. we could have done it for all of the letters. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, that was awesome. So, okay, well, we have a couple more things planned for this very special episode, but I wanted to pause really quick because I feel like there might be a few of you out here, out there listening, who are listening to us for the very first time, um, maybe because one of those lovely podcasters shared this um, or you saw a link somewhere on social media. So, If you are here for the first time, welcome. Um, Megan, I thought we could just for two minutes take a break and kind of talk 
about what our show is normally like um, for our new <laughs> listeners, since this is kind of a special... Are you sure we want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of like a special departure from what we normally do. So um, backing way up, I am Sarah Powers. I live in Southern California, and I have three kids who are nine, almost seven, and four. Megan, do you want to and introduce I yourself? I am Megan Francis. I live in southwestern Michigan, and I have five kids, ages eight, 11, 13, 17, and 19. Amazing. So we um, span a wide range of ages. We do. We always say we have and the eight, whole country. Yes. Yes. We span the country. We have eight kids between us from preschool to teen. And the way our show normally works is it's just a conversation. It's the two of us. We take a different motherhood or parenting topic every week. Um, we try to have a few helpful tips, but often we're working through these things just like you kind guys of are. On the fly, yes. yes, absolutely. So um, and then we also have our Mom, Our Voices series, which is an interview series. And we release at least one of those for, per month, sometimes two. Um, and that's where we might have on a parenting expert or an author or just somebody else in the space that we think you guys would love hearing from. So at least one interview a month and at least four, sometimes five, depending on how many Tuesdays there are, conversations with the two of us. So yeah. the best and I don't know, Sarah, like what yeah. would you say is our over like what makes I don't know if so you had to define us. I think it's that we're just kind of encouraging in general and often um, our advice is it's all going to be okay. In fact, I kind of feel like if someone's just start like just listening to us for the first time, they might want to just back up one episode. Yes. Yes. Last week. Episode 100. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that that will really go over the themes that we really hit on a lot in this show. Absolutely. And that is, yeah, like real life encouragement. Sometimes when you say encouragement, it's like sunshine and roses and motherhood is the best thing that ever happened to all of us. And I feel like our encouragement is more like it really is hard sometimes. Um, and we're all going through something, you know, we're all over the map, what we're going through and it's still going to probably be okay. So, (laughs) um, but we also take on, you know, seasonal topics. So right now we're recording this in May. I'm already thinking of end of school year and summer coming up. So next week you will hear us, um, complain a little bit and maybe (laughs) offer some helpful tips on surviving the end of school year. Um, and so yeah, stick with us. If you are here for the first time, head to the mom, Hour.com. That's the best place to get to know us and also find out ways to subscribe to our show. So we are available in Apple Podcasts or Google Play if you have a you know iPhone or Android device. Um, right. And we're online at themomhour.com and we're the Mom Hour on our social media platforms as well. So please do come and find us there. So okay, that was my new listener, my new listener welcome segment. Yeah. Um, Hi, new listeners. I know. Hi, guys. We're glad stick, to have you. Stick with us. Um, okay, so we thought we would wrap up this Mother's Day special by reading a couple of letters um, on our own, the two of us. Um, and first, I want to say, Megan, that we couldn't feature or read every single letter that came in, and that's because we got too many, which is yes. such a good problem to have. It is a great problem to have. Um, and I think I mentioned it earlier in the show, but these are all available on our website. So if you want to see and read every single letter that came in, images of them are at themomhour.com on our Mother's Day Challenge page, which we'll link to. Um, Can I tell you, I think there's something so cool about seeing them all just like laid out like that. I've I've scrolled through that page a couple of times now and it's like, I love seeing everyone's handwriting and the way they sign their names and like everything about it. The the cards, some people just, you know, wrote on regular paper. Some people wrote on cute stationery and note cards. It's just really fun to see that physically. Um, on that page. So definitely check that out. Yes, absolutely. And so if we didn't pick yours to read, um, it isn't because of anything that you did. Some of it, quite honestly, was a matter of timing. We got some really amazing ones kind of at the last minute, but because a lot of planning went into this episode and some of the other sharing that we've been doing, um, it was just sometimes came down to timing or, you know, other factors. So I didn't want anybody to feel like theirs didn't get chosen. But um, Megan, do you want to set up the letter that you're going to read? Yeah. So I really loved this one because as a mom of five, all of which are past um, preschool years, it's hard to believe, Mm -hmm. um, I have gone through what this mom is um, talking about five times. And so she's very, very right. So this letter is is addressed, Dear Mom of a Three-Year-Old, Don't worry. Your kid isn't a jerk because you are a bad parent. Your kid is three. Three-year-olds are jerks. If it seems like your kid is purposefully trying to push all your buttons, he is. That's his job. He's three. If he kicks, bites, and screams, he's not possessed. He's three. 
If you think he should know better than to behave as he does, you're right. He's smart, but he's also three. He's asking you important questions with his behavior. Can you be calm when I'm not? Am I too much for you? Will you still love me if... So mama, take deep breaths, hold him tight, be his ally, be his anchor in the storm, laugh with him as much as possible and know that you are doing great. It's not you. It's three high fives. Mom of a newly four year old. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> you know, we shared that on social media um, just this past weekend, and um, it probably got more traction than any of. We've shared so many over the last few weeks, and yeah, that and there's several fun. that have hit a nerve um, for various reasons. But it was like the instant recognition, and I have to say, um, we got another letter that we didn't end up reading today, but it was about somebody who had been told that the threes were so hard and the terrible twos were not as bad, and I hear that a lot. And I've actually told told that to people. You know, two isn't as bad. Three is really hard. Well, this mom had twins and her twins were <laughs> so hard at two. And she felt like, wait, if wait, two was lying. this bad, everyone was yeah. lying. And then three got easier. So yeah. basically, and I have a four-year-old who's four and change, four and a quarter. And, you know, still sounds like awful lot like the three-year-old in that That's letter. That's the thing. So, like once you think you got it figured out, yeah. it's the rules change. So yes, I love hearing that advice because sometimes three-year-olds are really, really hard and sometimes two-year-olds are harder and sometimes four-year-olds are harder. Yes. Sometimes they're not hard till they're like 10. Yeah. You just don't know. <laughs> you Sorry, know. they're going to be hard at some point though. But That's yeah, in point. fact, one of the <laughs> Facebook comments we got was, wait, was that for three or 13? Because I have to say right. it could go either way. So <laughs> right. um, I think that's what was so great about that letter is um, there was a little humor in it and definitely like an instant recognition recognition of Absolutely. what three is like, but also, you know, knowing that our, you know, our job is to help them. They are not in control of themselves at exactly. three and they're not supposed to be. I loved that. So, well, excellent reading job, Megan. Well, thank um, you. <laughs> so I'm going to read a letter from actually a grandmother, a mother of grown children who also happens to be my mother. Oh, so, yay. I know. My mom is such a supportive listener, listens to every show, um, and wanted to participate in the challenge. So, Well, that's a great way to cap it off, so I'm excited I, to hear I it. I agree. So, yeah, for context, she doesn't say this in the letter, but for context, her children are 37, almost 35, and 29. So a little bit ahead of uh, most of the letters we received. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, okay. Dear Moms. Learn what you can about raising kids. Find wise sources, good friends you trust, and take good advice into account. But when all is said and done, trust your own gut, your own smarts, and act accordingly. Stay grounded in yourself. You are wiser than you know. Let your children see you do what you love. If it's reading or sports or knitting or gardening or your career, do it fully and with joy. Don't shelter your children from all the bumps in life. Doing so takes away precious opportunities to learn. Children are resilient and resourceful. Figure out when to step in, but more importantly, when to step back. Be your best self. Remember that your children are keen observers. They are watching and they will learn more from how you treat others, how you manage adversity, how you play, how you take care of yourself, than any well-meant advice you impart to them. Finally, remember to be gentle on yourself because you are doing arguably the most difficult and important job in the world. Know there will be times when you will be unsure, lose your way, wish you'd done more or less in raising your kids. But in the end, and by the way, while you are still breathing, there is no end to being a mom. You will have done your best, and that really is good enough. Happy Mother's Day, Lisa. Oh, yeah. Well, I love that. I do, too. Um, well, should we just leave it there and say Happy Mother's Day? And I think so. Happy yeah. Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Thank Mother's Day, everyone. Again, for all who wrote in. Thank you to our guest readers. Um, and yeah, for new listeners and seasoned listeners, stay with us. You and I are off to a conference coming up this week. And yep. then we will be back next week with kind of normal podcasting life again into some <laughs> yeah. new topics for spring and yeah. summer. So. Um, thanks again to our sponsor, Soma. Don't forget to go get your 20% off voucher by going to soma.com slash the mom hour. And then everything we talked about today will be at the mom hour.com. This was episode 101. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called the tease made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage. 
on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Teas Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Teas Made. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour.